laws are meaningless. Mm -hmm. uh, the Constitution, unfortunately, meaningless. Now, I don't mean that in, in an absolute sense. What I mean to say is the meaning of the Constitution is absolutely fantastic. The meaning of the Bill of Rights and many of the amendments, many of them, not all of them, mm. are, are fantastic. The concept is brilliant. But it only works if you agree. If there are three people in a room, someone says, hey, if we order pizza, we all, we all split the bill. You say, yes. The pizza shows up, everybody eats, and then one guy says, I ain't paying anything. What can you do about it? You can say, get out. You can say, we won't do deals with you anymore. But the reality is, the agreement you had is meaningless if people are unwilling to abide by it. We have a constitution in this country which sets forth the framework for how the country operates. We, when, typically, when we mention the constitution, it's really fascinating to me. We're talking about the Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. yeah. specifically. Because the constitution has a lot of stuff in it, like here. So how the executive branch operates. Yeah. We really mean the Bill of Rights, the amendments that were added to it. So it is the constitution. The amendments are completely meaningless to a society that was moving towards chaos and no moral framework. Because sooner or later, if we don't resist the breakdown, you get a knock on the door and there's a police officer saying you engaged in hate speech. Why? You bought a pride flag and you burned it. Mm -hmm. And then they say, because of that, you're under arrest. And you say, but it's my property. Burning flags is constitutional protected. It's like, we don't care what the Constitution says. You've offended us and we have power. Turn around, put your hands behind your back or else. This is why you got to get to red states, for sure. I mean, th pick your red state well, but blue states, th that's going to happen in blue states. Um, it's less likely to happen in a red state. They tend to, you know, not care, not do anything, which is what conservatives can kind of be famous for, is not doing anything, like being a big talk, but not really walking a walk. So that's my recommendation. I did it. You should do it too if you need I, to. I, th I think we should, uh, we can play that game. Mm-hmm. If they say that burning a pride flag is hate speech and intimidation, then burning an American flag is too, because na uh, national, a nation of origin is a protected class. There you go. So if someone is choosing to destroy an American flag, that's hate speech. You got to play their own game better than them. That's how you beat them. You know, in the end, I think if you own a flag, you should be allowed to burn it mm, yeah. just safely. Like, it's funny when the left tries to burn an American flag in the middle of the street and the cops stop you know, stop them from doing it. And they're like, this is protected under the constitution. It's like, no, 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 you misunderstand. Not in a public space where you are threatening the lives of other people by starting large fires. Yes, right. exactly. Perhaps on, on, on your own property where you're legally allowed to have fires, you can burn your own property within reason because there's even laws against, I'm pretty sure it might be illegal to burn a flag because of the chemicals that are in it. Mm -hmm. You know, dyes or whatever they use or the synthetics and stuff it's, like that. It's all about getting that clip of the cops stopping them from yeah. burning the flag for level one thinkers who don't realize that they're being stopped because they're going to start a fire and kill people in a public I, space. I, I think um, one thing that should start happening is parents should sue schools that have pride imagery in the classroom and say these symbols are antagonistic and offensive to Christians and Christians are a protected class. I think Florida parents can push back on things. I'm not sure if that's one of them, but Florida parents are able to. In Massachusetts, there is a kid who wore a shirt that said there are two there are two genders. Mm, saw that. And they said you can't wear that because it's offensive to people of different gender identities. He didn't insult anybody. He stated his uh, uh, he stated a scientific fact. Yeah. Now granted they changed the definition of gender. You can make it mean whatever you want to mean. But why is that offensive to anybody? Okay, if that's the case, if they say this innocuous statement is offensive, I say the pride flag is offensive. But the problem is conservatives just play defense. Mm -hmm. So they wear the shirt, smugly smile, and then get sued and then told to take the shirt off. And I'm like, sue them. Make them take their... The, the judge ruled the kid can't wear the shirt until the c case is settled. It's like, okay. In the mean, I would demand to the judge that any other symbols that are deemed offensive by Christians be removed from the class as well. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, you can get one million signatures from Christians saying pride flags are offensive. Yep. Overnight. I'd be willing to bet if I went right now and said... Fill out this form if you're a Christian who finds pride imagery offensive. Then, here you go, Your Honor. Here's one million people. I think that warrants this is offensive to a protected class. I mean, it's bastardizing the covenant with God. That's exactly my point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. They, they've taken they've taken God's covenant with man and turned it into you know celebrating gay sex. Yeah, exactly. That's offensive. But Christians I mean, don't do anything about it. Right. Right. So, so what is the best way for conservatives to start 
being on the offense. I mean, I I think we we have to engage with our kids and we have to teach them the values. That's what Brave Books is doing, and we have to build our own communities. But what else? Like like how else do we take the country back? If they for come for you, you come for them. So it so it's about more than just being a great parent and having a community. It's like if the outsiders come for you, then you go for the outsiders. While also, you know, minding your business, taking care of your family and doing your community and all of that. But you got to you gotta stop the outsiders and, and hit them back because that's a lot of, we mind our business, which is wonderful, but also- Lawsuits, yeah, elections. Lawsuits. I mean, these people are determined. They, 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 I, don't, I don't know what happened, but you have a left that is driven by this vitriolic rage and you have a complacent traditional class. I don't even like to say conservative because what we're seeing on the culture war is disaffected liberals. Yeah. You know, uh, even Bill Maher is now more and more complaining about the left and he's a secular guy. So I think ultimately you have to, we're starting to see it though. I, I'm, I'm not saying any of this to be like, oh, the end is nine, we're doomed. I actually feel fairly optimistic, especially with what you guys are doing. Clearly there is a red line and people have been pushed up against the wall and they're starting to get angry about it. You got to sue. You can't just be sued. You know, is, or, 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 you know, what they're doing is, in Massachusetts, they're suing, saying the kid can wear this. How did it get to the point where the kid was told not to in the first place? Why do you have to sue? It's because you don't sue. So be proactive. I say, anybody who hears this, if your kids are in a school with pride flags, file the lawsuit now. Reach out to like America First Legal or something. There, there are tons of nonprofits that will sue and say, this symbol is, a, and in fact, you can even approach it another way. The rainbow's a religious iconography. Mm. It is God's covenant, and them putting it in the schools is a violation of separation of church and state. I like that. Now it's, oh, no, this is the pride flag. It means, ah, uh, Bible. It, it was a symbol of God's covenant, and you're sneaking it in. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't need to do that. I think you should outright just say it's an offensive symbol because it appropriates God's covenant as an insult to Christians. Yeah. And if they don't, if they say we disagree, be like, it doesn't matter if you agree or not. That kid was told he can't wear the two genders shirt by a judge. Judge says you can't wear it. Now it's pending, but he says while it's pending, you can't wear it. I say, okay, if the basis for which you cannot wear a shirt is someone got offended, take them pride flags down right now. You can't play that game. And unfortunately, this kid and his family and the legal team, their, their mentality is we don't complain when you put up the pride flag because you're allowed to believe what you want. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No complain. The schools should not be putting up religious iconography. I view the pride flag as religious. It is a non-theistic religion. It has all the tenets of religion. It has the structures of religion. And just because you say, but it's not. Sorry, you can't play the game. When the schools tried to introduce creationist curriculum, they said, no, it's religious. Nothing about creationism is religious. In fact, it could be simulist. It is, the, it is a scientific perspective. The universe is, in fact, a simulation, in which case the concept of basic creation is a scientific thesis. Nope, it's banned. It's religious. Okay, well then, pride, Marxism, all that stuff, religion, get it out of the schools. CRT, etc. I so, don't know. It seems like, it seems like fighting on their turf is, is a losing battle, and and the pub, public education system, you know, they've been captured, and I, I I think we need to, I think we need to be in, we need to be innovative and come up with just redesign, redesign things, redesign schools, redesign communities. Um, I mean, like there's all sorts of, there, there's, I don't know how we're still doing school the same way and that there's not options, you know, but like states should, should support entrepreneurship in schools. You know, like there's all sorts of ideas. I, I, I've got an idea for what I think is be an awesome school. Like you, 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 it's like a mix between Hogwarts homesteading and military training. <laughs> where, <laughs> okay. Where, I'm, I'm following. Yeah. You, you break kids up into like four four houses you get a plot of land four acres or so and all right this house is responsible for this acre and you, they've got their animals their their farm and and they're they engage in some commerce and, and they're competing sort of against the other houses and and well, that's a great idea and then and then you know in, engaging in in some military tactics training physical you know especially boys you know yes I, it would be all boys um science contests you think only an all boys school i think you could do well 
I, I think boys need to be around each other. And boys and girls are different. And, and you, you could do girls something very similar, mm -hmm. but maybe not so physical and military type stuff. No, right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like the idea. It's brilliant. I think, I think it should be a co-ed school, but I think you can have boys and girls programs. So it's like the boys at this time will go and do this training. The girls at this time will, will go and do this kind of training, but they still socially interact. You know, yeah, so maybe, maybe there's girls in their own houses, you know. Like, like Hogwarts. You like Hogwarts. Yeah. 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 Actually, did they do that? No, thought, no, they were mixed. They were mixed. Um, in the video game, they're not mixed. Oh, really? Yeah, in the video game, you have to choose which 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 dorm you go in. The boys and girls are separate. Huh. Yeah. Boys. I thought they were mixed. Maybe it's the movies that did them that way. But I just want to say this. You'll get the millennials. You know what you do? You set it up and you call it Hogwarts. You don't call it military <laughs> training. You call mm -hmm. it Defense Against the Dark Arts. Yes. And then you go to millennial <laughs> urban liberal parents and say, it's like a Hogwarts thing. The kids are sorted. We don't really have a sorting hat. That's not possible. But it's a fun experience where the kids get to... You could put it in AI. AI could sort them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have them answer personality tests, yeah. and then they get sorted into different uh, uh, houses. Yeah. And you you call it the Hogwarts experience, or you say, it's not Hogwarts because, you know, it's copyrighted. But we want kids to have a summer camp experience where they get to be like they're going to Hogwarts. And it's not real magic, but, you know, the Defense Against the Dark Arts will be like... We'll teach the kids a little taekwondo, a little karate and you stuff. You learn the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.